What's up guys, Lumion 11.3 has just came out and I'm pretty excited about it. There's some new features that I'm excited to go over. I think this is a pretty big update. Um, Lumion has done something that I think a lot of you are going to like. I know I'm excited about it. I'm downloading it right now as we speak and I'm ready to get into it. So check out this video. Okay guys, so the first feature that we're going to go over is the shadows for Omni Lights. So I'm going to go ahead and get into Lumion 11.3. I have it downloaded and let's go ahead and pop in a light. So I'm going to go to place and I'm going to go to the Omni Lights. So we'll click over here and the light fill has not changed. So this one works uh, the way it has worked before. It just kind of fills in the area with light. Uh, doesn't cast any shadows. That's how Lumion has been for, for a while with both light fills and Omni lights. So now, however, when we go to Omni light, we can start seeing a little difference here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a light and I'm gonna increase the brightness so you can see what it's doing a little better. And there you can see it is already casting a shadow just anywhere you place it, um, a realistic looking shadow. And I really like this feature. I think this is what Lumion always needed when it came to lights. Now, in the past, you can always put a spotlight. So if you go over here to spotlights, um, you I, I would go over here and place a spotlight so that it casts a shadow. Now, that's, that's the workaround. But now, since uh, Lumion has this new Omni light with shadows, I think you know, a lot of people are going to end up using this instead of those spotlights, uh, except for the occasions where, you know, it makes sense to actually put a spotlight. But this Omni light, I think, is going to be very useful for a lot of people. And here there are a couple different changes as well. And one thing I think is pretty cool, and I'm going to go ahead and delete one of these so you can kind of see it, the shadows better. They have this new shadow exclusion zone. So what is that about? It's a very cool thing and I'm gonna show you why. So let's say I wanna put a light right here where my pendant is. Well, look what's happening. It's casting, it's placing the light right on the surface of that pendant. So it's just casting a massive shadow, which of course is not cool. That's not what we want. But when I go to the shadow exclusion zone, it does exactly what it says it's going to exclude the shadows or the surfaces within this bubble. So you kind of see what it's doing. It's it's um, that circle around it. It's going to exclude all the surfaces within that and then the light will be cast outside of that bubble. So that's pretty cool and really cool for situations like this where you would have a pendant light and you don't want it to show the shadows um, you know, right within that uh, exclusion zone so you can go ahead and create a more realistic light effect for that and if you see if we go down here we can see it's still casting a shadow from from where this light is you can see it's casting a shadow onto that chair and, and um, pretty cool okay so the next new feature is this multifunctional clip planes uh, feature so let's go ahead and go over that so to use that we go over here to our uh, our utilities and go to place and here we have this clip plane uh, selection so I'm gonna go ahead and click this and place it just anywhere on my model and I'm gonna go ahead and use the select tool so here we can select it and adjust some of its properties or if we want to uh, move it up so basically basically if you've worked with SketchUp this is kinda like the section tool it allows you to cut sections in your model so you can kind of, um, maybe you're trying to see something, or I, I, I can see this being really useful for placing furniture. So let's say if I want to get inside these rooms, I could easily just um, cut that section above here and just easily move maneuver around to placing objects. So that's one, one area I see it being very useful. And another one, let's see, is I can rotate it. So let's go to rotate. And here you can rotate the plane. So, and that's not really doing much. So there we go. It's a big uh, 
change there. So basically you can cut it however you want and then you can move that plane um, up, down, left, right. So just how, wherever you want to cut it. Now another cool thing that they did is you can put multiple um, clip planes. So let's go to place another one. So I'm going to go ahead and place another one here. And here we go. So now we have two clip planes going on and I can adjust each one and they allow you to do a maximum of three. So let's go ahead and do one more. So I'm going to go ahead and place one more and I'll just place it here and it seems like you always have to place it um, kind of on that flat horizontal direction and then it'll let you adjust it afterwards. I'm not sure if there's a way to make it automatically uh, come in at a certain way. So there you go. So basically I have these three planes, uh, clip planes in my model here and I can just look around and maneuver around in my model like that. So pretty cool feature that they added here and let me see if I went to something here. Yeah, then they all just disappear and you can move freely. So let's say if you wanted to show someone a certain aspect of your house and you you know just makes it a little bit easier to maneuver in your model. Okay, so the next feature that I'm going to cover, I'm going to come back to the new character silhouettes, but let's jump over here to rendered measurements. So if I go to uh, Lumion and we go back to utilities and we go to place um, one of these and I'm going to go here to measure and let's go ahead and measure from our countertop to our cabinet and we click here and we can do a couple things we can change the color of our dimension lines um, you can just basically change it to whatever you want and then here if we click render in output we can go to our rendered scene and when we go to render this or to export it you'll see your dimension line there so um, th then your your actual plans can actually become uh, more like construction documents when, when you can put some real measurements on there so that's pretty cool um, feature that they added and now the only thing I don't like is that they are in uh, the metric system which here in the US we use the imperial system so I don't think Lumion has a way of changing that now if I'm wrong someone please correct me in the comments below and if you don't mind show me how you do it because I would love to be able to use something like that um, but right now I don't think I can use that as it's in the metric system and also I don't think there's a way to um, to actually select an exact point in your model like an edge or um, a corner or anything like that so your your measurements are somewhat accurate but not totally accurate so they're, they're accurate but just not precise to wherever you might be trying to um, measure since you can't even keep uh, an orthographic um, line you know you can't keep it 100 percent vertical or whatever so that's the only thing I think is kind of bad um, it would be nice if there's a way to improve that okay so the next new feature we're going to go over is the new character silhouettes so I'm going to go over here to Lumion and let's go to the people and animals category and go ahead and go to place and it, over here in people 3d silhouettes you can see that they added a couple new ones here that you may not have uh, seen before um, some of these I think are pretty cool so let's go ahead and place one in this one looks good here and go ahead and place this in my model let's go ahead and rotate and I, I'm I like using uh, silhouettes in my model because I think they look a little bit more architectural since um, it's not an actual person you can make it look a little bit more conceptual than um, than just a uh, when, then showing a real person in there you can show something that's uh, a little bit more um, I guess architectural that, that's the only way I know to describe it and it's not so distracting from the actual model but you can show kind of the scale of a room by putting in a person in there so I think it's um, pretty neat that they um, continue to add people uh, I think it's a, a great idea I think they should continue to to add that to Lumion so 
new 3D silhouettes. Okay, and the last thing um, that they did here is um, they made some changes to the group selection. They updated the lighting interface. Uh, just slight changes that um, I, I think anyone that's been using Lumion in the last uh, few versions, you're not going to have any trouble. Um, there, there's some more tutorials that are popping up in uh, while, while you work while you are working in Lumion in case you need some help. And what else? Updated material, highlight effects, updated mass movement effects. So a couple things they added there. I'm not going to go over all of them, but that this is just a quick overview of the, some of the things that I thought were pretty cool about this latest update. So if you like this video, please give me a like. Subscribe to this channel if you like content like this. And let me know what you think. Is this a good update? Are you excited about the shadows? And I will see you next time. Thanks. And as always, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel. It's been a very slow process. But with your help, I will get to uh, having this channel monetized, which will help me create more videos and great content for you guys. So thanks, and I'll see you next time.